tonight. Find out when and where you can see ASWSU's executive candidates debate the issues. And we report on the State of the Association speech delivered by the current ASWSU president. And we welcome in Idaho gubernatorial candidate Paulette Jordan. Murrow News 8 starts now. From Studio B on the campus of Washington State University, this is Pullman's only nightly newscast. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening. I'm Matt Money, And I'm Dare Livens. Welcome to Murrow News 8. Next year's Associated Students of Washington State University's presidential and vice presidential candidates will face off in a debate Sunday from 5 until 7 p.m. in the Cubs Senior Ballroom. Election polls will open at 12.01 Tuesday morning. Staying with ASWSU, President Jordan Frost and Vice President Garrett Kalt spoke to students about their accomplishments and challenges during their State of the Association speech last night. The speech drew over 100 people to the Todd Hall Auditorium, and the pair spoke about the four pillars of their agenda, community, academics, transparency, and safety. We really believe that every issue or um, thing that students face on campus can be put into those four pillars of community, academics, transparency, and safety. The speech comes just days before WSU students decide on the next batch of leaders for the 2018-2019 academic year and a little over two months before the end of the Frost and Colt term. With baby boomers winding down their careers and preparing to retire, WC launched a new program in senior care. Afika Sham visited Todd Hall to find out exactly what this program offers students and those they care for. Afika? Thanks, Darrell. The new Institute for Senior Living comes from the School of Hospitality Business Management right behind me. In addition to classes related to the field, the school also plans to focus more on industry partnerships with senior care companies. The school says that this ensures classroom lessons reflect the practical demands on the industry while helping students develop professional skills through hands-on experience. Now, with regards to research, the school only examines management training and the effects of farm-to-table practices in senior living communities. But with this new program, they hope to expand those research opportunities. So, Afik, what sort of research does the Institute plan to introduce in the future? In time, researchers hope to examine the effectiveness, acceptance, and return on investment of senior technology and how it may improve the overall quality of seniors' lives. Reporting live from Todd Hall, I'm Afik Hisham, Mer News 8. Over in Olympia, Governor Jay Inslee vetoed a bill last night that would exempt state lawmakers in both the House and Senate from public disclosure laws when dealing with communication with constituents. Inslee says transparency is a cornerstone of democratic government and he is proud of his administration's record of public disclosure. Inslee vetoed the bill after he received numerous emails and phone calls urging him to take action. An investigation led by Attorney General Bob Ferguson reveals several rental groups discriminate against veterans, including three Spokane companies. The companies intentionally rejected vouchers given to veterans by the Department of Housing. Veterans are protected from discrimination by Washington law, and out of the eight companies under investigation, six agreed to stop discriminating, and only two will need enforcement actions against them. With elections in Idaho coming up, Republican Senator Dan Foreman will have at least one challenger during this election season. David Nelson, a Democrat from Idaho, filed to run for the seat. At least three candidates will run for treasurer, and two candidates will run for the position of commissioner of the first district. However, the current commissioner of Idaho, Richard Walser, will not run for re-election. Re Additionally, tre uh, treasurer Lois Reed will not run for re-election either. Those interested in running for Sander have until March 9th to apply. As Idaho falls behind in education, Latah County pushes back. I went to the uh, Moscow Public Library to learn about the Latah County funded technology. Idaho ranks 48th in education across the country. Keep in mind that's out of 50 states. But the Latah County Library Association continues to push for education, this time with a 3D printer. If you're not excited about science or math, or like, you know, it's a way to learn how to code or use a CAD program, 
and then it shows you something tangible. The printer gets children involved with STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, through hands-on experience. Residents of Laytown County can use the printer for two hours once per week to print just about anything they like, from this phone holder to a wrench or even a rocktopus. A Moscow mother says technology not only at the library, but in the actual schools will benefit her children. My son, he's very creative and he likes to build things and make things. So I think uh, when technology comes and meets the um, creativeness and everything that kids have, it's going to just really help them. Even students at WSU recognize how better technology helps further education. They're learning how to use it for medical stuff like replacing a rib uh, with like a piece of metal. Turning around to the 3D printer, I just think that it will help him uh, be able to have more hands-on in the classroom, hands-on in learning environment. Matt Money, Murrow News 8. Coming up, I'll talk with Idaho gubernatorial candidate Paulette Jordan when Murrow News 8 continues. That's going to be really exciting. I, I hope so. Yeah, I'm interested. No more pencils, no more books, no more teachers, dirty looks. School's out for summer. School's out forever. this place needed was better graduation rates. So we worked with schools like Henry Ford High, and now they're up 18%. And it can happen in every place. To help us do more good this year, go to unitedway.org, because great things happen when we live united. Nice. Where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a uh, Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Today, we are pleased to have Idaho gubernatorial primary candidate Paulette Jordan in studio with us to discuss her candidacy. Representative Jordan, so we really want to, first off, thank you for coming by and uh, talking with us for just a minute. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, so one of the uh, major things that you have talked about uh, as you are running for uh, your position mm -hmm. is um, Idaho and education. Mm -hmm. um, we all know that Idaho is one of the lower ranked uh, states for education. So what do you plan to do for that if elected? Right, all Idahoans, uh, including myself as a mother of two, we're all ready for change. And right now that needs to be significant change. So transforming Idaho is well overdue. And so one of my top concerns essentially is reforming our education system here in Idaho State. So uh, when I talk about education, I look at it from the inside out. And uh, right now its core work needs to evolve around looking at the future of work, future of opportunities, and if we really truly are about prosperity for each and every Idahoan, we have to look at standing behind every single student we have in the state. Right, and then another one of your issues that you talked about a little bit is uh, the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you plan to do as far as that goes? Yeah, I've always been a, a strong uh, frontline uh, warrior, or if you will, a leader when it comes to the environment, and especially with my background, my heritage. Uh, I was brought up in a certain function to always have that uh, hard fought line and uh, to defend our environment in every way possible. Uh, however, as a businesswoman, I always know that in practicality, we need to ensure that there's a balance between the industry and environment. Uh, however, we have to look at our future sustainable uses, our new practices, and uh, balance that with uh, our ag in the state, and of course, uh, future jobs. And uh, of course, we want to have a, a place and um, the beauty, the heritage of all that to uh, pass on to our next seven generations. Right, and I think that's really important. Well, I really want to thank you for uh, taking a couple of minutes to talk with us. Oh. And Thank uh, so you. thanks for coming by. Appreciate that. And uh, when, Char uh, when we return, Charlie Nelson gets us up to date with our five-day forecast. Expect weather for the weekend. We'll find out next on Murrow News 8.
Right. Well, thank you for talking well, about thank us. Thank you. That was great. So good to see you guys. <laughs> so what's up? Oh, we finally bought a place. Holy cow. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. Mm -hmm. Jeez, by the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. Yeah, I have no idea where it goes. Well, you're mm -hmm. spending a lot on... Mm -hmm. Is it good? Oh, God. Oh, how is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. We set out the month of March with snow. Charlie, how long can we expect the snow to stick around? Well, Daryl, we got close to about two or three inches last night, and we can expect another half inch today. Um, we're at about 31 degrees right now, and we can expect light snow throughout the day, so try to watch out for ice, stay off the roads if you can, because it's still going to be, snow's going to stick around for a while. Then if we go to, the whole state has very cold weather today. The um, east side, we, in Spokane and Pullman and Wenatchee, is going to get snow. Well, the west side is going to do what it does best and keep raining. So we're just going to have cold temperatures throughout Washington, and hopefully the snow won't last too long. Alrighty, and if we look at tomorrow, we're going to get about same temperature-wise, but the snow is going to be gone, so we can expect cloudy weather. So this is a good day to get out of the house, do the grocery shopping, whatever you need to do to prepare for the week. And then this is our weekday forecast here. So Sunday, we're going to have snow again, but then we're going to have a nice break until Friday. So before spring break, this is good. We're going to have 44 degrees, which um, watch out for road conditions. Check your flights before you go for break. And yeah, so that's all I have for weather today. Back to you guys at the desk. After the break, we'll let you know what to expect in today's episode of WSU's Cooter Corner. We'll be right back. Good one, son. Last summer, my new dad took me on vacation. <laughs> First, we went deep sea fishing. Wow! I'm so proud of you, son. <laughs> and then we went on Thunder Shark. That was awesome! Let's go again! Three times. <laughs> I gotta say, it was pretty cool. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Oh, not again. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play, what you wear, how you dance, or even what direction life takes you. You just need to be there. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. Cooey Hug joins us now to let us know what we can expect after the break in WSU's Cougar Corner. What are we, uh, what are we coming our, what's coming our way? Well, Kui? yeah, Matt, well, we'll be talking with WSU women's basketball. We're going to talk about Sean Miller coming out yesterday and coaching the basketball team at Arizona. And the last from the NBA, it's going to be exciting. Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. There's a, there's a great a, show, guys. Well, today. there's a basketball story coming up, right? Yeah, there's going to be a great basketball show. We're going to have a lot of them. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for watching us. You can join us every weeknight at 7 and 10 for Pullman's only nightly newscast. Have a great night, and don't forget to follow Murrow News 8 on Facebook and Twitter. Good night, Pullman. Yeah, I wonder if they talk to Nike.